Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know there's a few new people here, so I do want to just say hi. My name is Lex if you don't know who I am, and I would love it if you would please, if you are not already, like, share, commenting, and subscribing to the videos. I would absolutely love it if you would do those things. All of these things help my channel to grow and honestly enable me to continue just making content, being here. It's all part of the process. So I would love that to all of the new people here. I know a lot of you are from Love is Blind, but there are so many other shows that I love and I'm interested in. I also love pop culture. So I do plan to bring you guys not only other show recaps, reviews, reactions, but also just talking about other tea from the internet, whether, as I said, it's pop culture, social media, all of these things I love. So please, if, especially if you're not subscribed and you're watching these videos, please subscribe. I, I, please subscribe. But anyways, we are going to talk today about The Traders. Now, I have been watching the entire season. I ain't gonna hold y'all. I didn't get to get in last week's recap because I had a really busy week or the last couple of weeks recap. Sorry about that, but I will be recapping the finale and the reunion. So we are gonna be talking about it today because girl, this was a great season. If you guys have never watched The Traders season, I highly recommend it. The show is really good. I really enjoyed this season. I thought the cast was phenomenal. I thought that it was a lot of really good gameplay. I know a lot of people, some critics were upset about the Bravo click or this click, but I honestly thought that the cast was great. I thought that there was a lot of enticing and engaging gameplay and yeah, I, I hope, well, we know for a fact, because it was announced at the end of this season, that there is going to be Traders US Season 3. So I am very excited. Anyway, let's get into the finale episode first, then we'll touch on some things in the reunion. So first and foremost, Kate... So we start off our episode with a cliffhanger of who Kate is going to take out in her last murder as a traitor. Now, I'm just going to say this. I personally did not like it that Kate was able to come in so late and the fact that there was a traitor recruited in so late I just didn't love that I feel like it gave her an unfair advantage though I will say for the record I don't think Kate was a good traitor she was actually a really bad traitor and people were very much onto her so Kate took out Sheree and Sheree was very aware that Kate was a traitor. Like Sheree literally was like, I saw her body language in the round table. Like it was very obvious that she was a traitor. Just the way she was shifty eyed, the way she was fidgeting. She's a traitor. So Sheree knew that and she took her out. So we see some conversations between Trishel and Sandra and they finally are starting to suspect that Kate may be a traitor. Okay. Again, a lot of people are catching on to traits uh, Kate's very suspicious behavior, her demeanor, the fact that like she was going really hard and going to bat a lot for Phaedra, just behavior that a lot of people were not so clear on and understanding. So they have the final challenge. They take like a helicopter to the challenge. The only thing I would think that is of note in this challenge is that CT and Trishel were like literally the only people that were able to do anything in this challenge. The other people left over, they all were clueless. CT makes a joke that he was literally carrying four middle-aged women on his back. And that's facts because none of these ladies could do this challenge. So, um... Trishel tries to actually like recruit Sandra into their that side's alliance because Sandra has been kind of more so working with the Bravo side rather than working with like the Peter Pals and that side. So Trishel is literally telling Sandra like, "Look, she's a traitor and she's gonna get you and you're gonna get taken out." <laughs> and uh, she tells her she's not in this group, like with MJ and Kate, even during the challenge, they want the money. So like, she's not in that group. She's really trying to like get Sandra to like work with them. So, uh, after the challenge, you know, basically Sandra is confronting Kate and Sandra confronts Kate about bringing up her name to get her out. Because in the car, Kate had brought up Sandra's name and said, let's get her out. She might be a traitor. So Sandra's like, mm, okay, I heard you brought my name up. Well, so what about it? So, you know, Kate's a bad actress. 
Kay is a really bad actress. Kay is not good at being a traitor. Like she, you can say whatever you want about Miss Phaedra Parks, but I feel like Phaedra did a phenomenal job this season as a traitor because nobody suspected her. Nobody was onto her. And I really, really, really think that Phaedra was able to embody being a traitor. Okay. I think a lot of these other people, sorry, but they're not doing so hot. They ain't, they ain't doing so well. So anyway, after that, Trishel and TCT, basically, Trishel and CT tell Sandra. No, sorry, I'm saying this wrong. Sandra tells Kate that if Sandra, Trishel, and CT go for her, she is out. Okay, so she basically tells Kate, look, you have no leg to stand on. If we all choose to go for you, you don't have the numbers. So what's good with it? You know what I mean? Like, what's good with it? If you, if we all turn on you, it's a wrap. And Kate also talks to CT and says that Sandra says she's voting for her. <laughs> so it's just been a lot. It's a lot. Everybody's going back and forth. Everybody's in a state of dissension. But I think mostly everyone at this point did agree that Kate is a traitor. Like, I think everybody knows off the body language people are just starting to really get suspicious of Kate. So CT is like, I think Sandra might be a traitor. You know, she's a good, strong player. I feel like CT, this whole game, he has not been really on to much. I feel like he's been wrong. <laughs> he's been wrong a lot. So he thinks that Sandra might be a traitor. But CT also brings up like telling everybody else what they want to hear. Basically, he brings up that, you know, Sandra is just telling people what they want to hear that like, she's just giving them anything so she could stay safe. So we go to the round table. Okay. The prize money is at $208,000 $208,100. That is the prize fund that they've accumulated over the course of this game. Not too shabby. So CT starts. He confronts Kate about protecting Phaedra. He asks her, why? Why were you protecting Phaedra? Kate claims that she needed to stay safe by staying with the Bravo family. She basically said that, look, they had the numbers, you know, they were going to keep me safe. So why not ride with them? Especially because I came late in the game. That's Kate's excuse. So Kate claims that she did believe that Phaedra was a traitor, but they needed to decide which traitor to get out first. Because remember, Kate was already here when Dan got out. So basically, they were asking, like, why didn't you... If you knew Phaedra was a traitor, why didn't you do something? Why didn't you take her out? Um, but basically, she tries to fall on that Dan was more of a threat. So Dan needed to leave the game more than she did or uh, more than Phaedra did, let's say. So she also believed that Phaedra and Sheree were traitors. This is what she's telling them. She's telling them that she believed Phaedra and Sheree were traitors and she stuck with them because as I said, she felt that that Bravo side was protecting her. So CT thinks that Sandra's the other traitor. CT, I feel like the whole game has been pretty hung up on this idea that Sandra is a traitor, which is just funny to me because I'm like, really? Sandra hasn't played the game that hard. And I feel like a lot of Sandra's guesses have been wrong. You know, I think she did really well at Survivor, I think. But at least here in the Traders, she just was not bringing it. So Sandra says that she was only going to vote for CT because Kate said in the car, let's take out CT. So Sandra is basically trying to be like, hey, look, they came to me. They told me what we was doing. I just wanted to go along with the group because I don't want to I don't want to be on nobody's bad side. Yeah. OK, Kate. So they go to vote. They go to vote. And basically, Kate votes out Sandra. MJ votes out Sandra. Sandra votes out Kate. Trishel votes out Sandra and CT votes out Sandra. They are all convinced that Sandra is a traitor. So Sandra leaves. You would think, oh, the game's over, right? Boom, everybody went, nope. Alan comes in, tells them, look, you guys can choose to vote again and again and again until either you guys say you no longer want to vote 
or until there are two people left, whichever one comes first. They choose to vote again. So they go out to the fire pit and they vote once again. Kate votes to end the game. I was like, Kate, what the, what the heck, girl? What do you mean you are voting to end the game? My good sis, what do you mean you are voting to end the game? So Kate votes to end the game. <laughs> Kate votes to end the game. Um, Trishel, banish again. CT, banish again. And MJ votes to banish again. So these are our final four here. And those three, bar it, besides Kate, vote to banish. And I'm like, did Kate do this on purpose? So anyway, Kate votes for Trishel in their, in their next vote. Trishel votes for Kate. And then MJ votes for Kate. And CT also votes for Kate. <laughs> they all vote for Kate. Because it's like, why? Like, it was obvious. I'm assuming Kate wanted to bow out, right? I think Kate didn't love being a traitor. I think that she, that was just her way of kind of being like, I'm a traitor. I quit. I'm gonna let you all faithful spite it out. At least I would like to think that because otherwise, girl, your decision made zero sense. Zero sense. Okay. So they vote again, whether they want to end or continue. So MJ votes to end the game. But CT and Trishel both vote to banish again. So they banish again. This was crazy. Because CT and Trishel knew. They absolutely knew that MJ was not a traitor. But they vote to banish again. They vote to banish again. I was like, holy. That's crazy. So they vote to banish again. So. Trishel votes for CT. I was like, huh? Y'all, my camera ain't focusing. Trishel votes for CT. MJ votes for Trishel. <laughs> and Trishel votes for CT. And CT votes for MJ. So they have to revote. They have to revote. And this time, Trishel votes for MJ. So both CT and Trishel vote for MJ, and MJ gets out. And those two split the money. I ain't gonna hold you. That was legendary television because I've never seen that. I've never seen that. Those two literally banded together on purpose to get out Trishel. I mean, the, uh, not Trishel, to get out MJ because they wanted to split the money. And as you know, CT and Trishel had this pact, you know, as the challenge people where they were like, look, if we get to the end together, we're going to take the money for the two of us. But I didn't think they was for real going to do it. That, sh that ish was crazy, y'all. And I do not blame MJ for being so pissed because it's like, y'all really just took me out because you didn't want to give me the money with you, which to me was kind of crazy. I ain't gonna hold you. That is crazy because they knew MJ was not a traitor. They knew for a 100% fact that MJ was not a traitor. So for them to take her out was crazy to me. Let's go into the reunion. So Andy Cohen is the host, which is great. I didn't watch Traders US season one, so I don't know if Andy Cohen has been hosting, but he was the host. I was like, okay, Andy, hello. So MJ's still bitter. First off, MJ is still bitter and rightfully so. Uh, she basically talks about how she blocked both Trishel and CT on Instagram. And you know what? Usually I'm like, it's a game, it's a game, it's a game. But that was literally such a like convoluted move. That the two of them knew she was not a traitor. And they still voted her out anyway. So Trishel is asked at some point, did she really think that CT was a traitor? Because remember, it, before the revote, she originally voted for CT to get out. And she goes, yeah, I did. I don't believe. I don't. For some reason, I don't believe her. For some reason, I feel like the two of them scheme that like they really schemed that together that they were going to do it this way 
um, just to like throw off MJ that this is a purposeful plan. I don't know. Something that just, I don't know. It just feels weird. Like all of a sudden you think CT is a traitor when this whole game you've been whining and crying about how you want him to be on your side and you want him to, you know, stick with you and you two are from the challenge and blah, blah, blah. I don't know, y'all. I was just like, mm-mm. So they touch on the fact that Ekansu and Peter supposedly have a relationship. Um, that's not a thing. Ekansu and Peter do not have a relationship. <laughs> I think that's crazy. But um, Dan also talks about, is asked about why he got out Bananas so early. Like he basically says that he wanted to break up CT and Bananas because they're best friends. And I'm like, Dan, those two hate each other. CT and Bananas have never trusted each other for anything. Those two would have never been in like an alliance together. In fact, whenever one of them had the first strike, they would have probably gotten each other out. So I thought that was interesting. It just goes to show Dan don't really know these shows like that. So they do touch on Deontay and him leaving um, because remember Deontay left earlier in the season just because he couldn't take it. He said that being on the show for him brought up a lot of like, um, trauma, just a lot of things with like childhood and that it just really was a learning experience for him, but he needed to get out. Peppermint also gave a very heartfelt speech about how basically her being, about beast about basically her being targeted in the beginning of the game really for no reason because remember she got out because she made a face and people assumed she was a traitor because of it someone started i think it was trichelle that started that she had made a face when she asked her a question and she got out and so she touches on how as a trans woman she felt this kind of pain and this kind of experience many times in her life you know, being ousted for being the only LGBT person there and feeling like she was being targeted. So she really talked about how that experience in the beginning of the game made her feel. And I think it was very touching. It was very eye-opening because it is hard, right? When you are that person that is different, you are that person that is marginalized. And I think anybody who's part of any kind of marginalized group can absolutely understand, I think, what Peppermint was talking about. So I really thought that was a great speech. I really liked that. Um, so Marcus and Larsa, you know, they talk about how Marcus and Larsa were seen out with like, without their rings on, things like that. And basically they talk about how they had broken up temporarily, but now they are back together after working on things. I don't know about them. IRL, I'm going to be very honest with you, but apparently they were not on the best of terms. But by the time this reunion was filmed, they was I. <laughs> so that's just them. Phaedra is still pissed at Dan and rightfully so. Okay. I'm sorry. But in the beginning when Phaedra goes to, or when Parvati went to let me get my words right. When Dan goes to Parvati and he's like, oh, let's get out Phaedra. It was like, why though? <laughs> like you had absolutely no reason to target Phaedra. If it, like Dan, you were the target. I think Dan played this game terribly. Okay, Dan, being how you are on Big Brother, being the silent orchestrator does not work on the traitors. And I feel like there were so many times we saw Dan was asked questions. Dan was asked, you know, anything. Give us something. And that man couldn't even come up with something on the spot. I feel like it was already very obvious that Dan was a traitor. Like I said from day one, why in the world are they making Dan a traitor? If you know Dan from Big Brother, I feel like it was very obvious that he was a traitor. But the fact that Dan thought like not talking, not interjecting, not giving any opinions, he didn't think that was going to make him a target at some point. Just, Dan, get it together. So for me, I definitely thought it was justified that Phaedra was still mad because it's like you really had no reason to turn on me at this point in the game. And I feel like turning on Phaedra didn't even buy him more time. Like he literally still got out. And Phaedra was the last traitor of the original bunch to make it. Out of the two original traitors, because remember, Parvati was also recruited. So out of the two original traitors, Phaedra is the only one that made it far. That's why I keep saying, y'all can say whatever you want about the way that Phaedra played this game. But Phaedra made it far. 
People can talk all they want about the Bravo click, but at the end of the day, Phaedra integrated herself into that. And she also played the game by having an alliance. And what is wrong with having alliances? In my opinion, what is wrong with having an alliance in a game? The Peter Pals could not get their ish together. If the Peter Pals were smart, they would have kind of made friends with some of the side of the Bravo, of the Bravo people. You guys are making completely opposing alliances without still having some overlap. So, in my opinion, I understood Phaedra being mad at Dan. They do talk about the contrast of how the people that were like housewives or on Bravo shows or don't come from challenge shows. Um, and then the people who do come from like Big Brother, the challenge, Survivor, how for the people who come from these shows, they get over it. They are like, it's a game. I'm over this. Once the game's over, they're not mad at anybody. However, the housewives, you know, the Bravo people, they tended to hold like more of a grudge or they tended to feel it more. And I thought that was an interesting contrast and an interesting dynamic. Um, I do think it's true. Obviously, if you're on these challenge shows, you kind of get over it faster, right? You just get used to it. Whereas I think for a lot of the Bravo people, the Bachelor people, whoever, it was more personal, right? It's more personal because you're not used to that world. Uh, and Phaedra talks a lot about how she loved playing the traitors because it was so different than the world she comes from. I think Phaedra did a phenomenal job. Like, I don't know if that's a general consensus, but I think Phaedra did a phenomenal job playing this game. She got really far. She flew under the radar, but she didn't do anything that made her a target. And I think that's a great way to play the game. I don't think that every single player on these shows has to be raw, 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 going in, going hard. I really do think that it's okay to just fall back a little. And I think Phaedra did a great job with that. So I loved it. I think Phaedra did amazing. Um, other things that were touched on is, uh, oh, Phaedra and Peter, they made up basically. Um, because if you remember from a few, a few round tables ago, P uh, Phaedra had her iconic phrase, this is not the bachelor, Peter, and I don't have to kiss your ass for a rose. So Peter brings her a rose. Very nice. Very cute. I hope they're, they're fine and they're good. But yeah, I think that was basically it. MJ does say she's still bitter. MJ does still say she's still not happy with them, but that is basically it, y'all. That is the reunion part of the traitors. And honestly, y'all, this was very good television. Um, my first season of Traders was Traders Canada, the one that ended just a little bit before this, and I loved it. I think this was great television. I think this was a great cast, in my personal opinion. I think that they brought it. I'm very excited for next season, but that's all I have for y'all today. So please, if you made it to this point, I know you like the vids, okay? So please, first off, hit that subscribe. If you're not subscribed and you're here and you're watching till this point, hit it. Okay, let's not play no more. Just please hit that subscribe, okay? Please hit that subscribe. Um, and if you are a subscriber already, obviously would love it if you would like, comment, share the videos, just do anything you can to boost this content if you like it. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.